All right, so this is a build around for blue white humans. Um, the big question that you would want to ask or like ask why bother with this as opposed to the traditional four or five color humans deck or whatever it is that sees play in modern. The main reason to try this, and I'm not saying it's better than five color humans, but I'm saying the reason why it might be worth trying is because we have access to actual white and blue mana consistently in our mana base here, which lets us play non-humans consistently. So we get to play Giver of Runes, which is a core. We get to play Deputy of Detentions, which is a Vidalcan. We get to play actual white cards in our sideboard like Path to Exile and Rest in Peace consistently and still be able to cast them. So we're going to see, see how this goes. In addition to four copies of Giver of Runes, in the in the main deck we also have four copies of unsettled mariner here which this card seems sweet for protecting our deputies of detention so let's uh let's dive on into a league and see how this goes i don't know that i'd classify the five color humans mana base as being inconsistent it just has a lot of lands that only cast creatures and don't make colored mana for not creatures so basically it just can't play cards like rest in peace and path to exile yeah yeah mariner can always be cast off cavern of souls regardless of what is named it is always all creature types it seems okay horn and hostage thank you Yeah, between between now and July second, I'm gonna be taking, I'm gonna be streaming a little bit less because this is kind of like the low point in the streaming cycle. So it makes makes sense for me to take a little bit of time off now because I'm gonna ramp things back up when we get the the new set released next month on July second. And turn turn one vial is a good draw. I agree. I just played Th Thalia's Lieutenant here. When I like to use my mana. Bell Guardian, thank you for the nine month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Hope you're having a wonderful Thursday. I think it will be difficult to win without Mantis Rider. I have no idea. Let's find out together. If I was good at predicting the future, I'd use that power for a lot more than just children's card games. There's not, there's not a substitute for doing your homework in Magic the Gathering. Practice, practice, practice. Ta-da! Bulgarian. Itty bitty bugle boy company B. We could we could get our opponent might tell us to quell ourselves here. This is a little unfortunate. Why not violin giver in response to the trigger to get a counter? I'd encourage you to read my magic cards that are on the table. I'm 
One of the one of the questions posed was, do we fear we could lack closing power without Giver of Runes? One of the things that are without Mantis Rider, Giver of Runes gives closing power in an interesting way because it technically gives our creatures evasion, right? Like we can use the protection to push through blockers when they only have one color of blocker. Sure. So they're going to bounce Giver here because they can't bounce anything else. Oh. Oh, no. They're running back the... Yep. Yep. All right. Well, well shoot. Read. Wow. Look how rude Moto is. It's like, hey, Jeff. Jeff, why don't you want to cast your card, Jeff? Jeff, Jeff, cast your card. Jeff, why don't, why don't you want to cast your card, Jeff? Thanks. Thanks, Moto. Love you, too. Oh, you know, I should wait to play this. Because if Bugler finds me a 3-drop I want to play, I, uh, I'd like to play the 3 and put the Seacrum Coast into play tapped. Which I think is happening here. See, so yeah, I've been I've been inefficient. I should I should have a tap duh. Should have a tap Seacrum Coast in play here. I guess I can take champion of the parish. Would I rather would I rather have deputy or would I rather have champion? If I take champion, this is going to be a four and this will be a six. So I think I'd rather do that. It also, it also makes my land sequencing less embarrassing. Gotta, gotta save face. This card's a one, two. That's nice. I think I just 10 them, right? I think I just 10 them. And like, they can't take any of my non-giver of runes off the table here. Morning, Pike. Yeah, they're just, just dead to my. They're dead to like. Give her. I guess they technically have spell quarter jump block, but they're just not coming back from this board state. Good example of playing to the board quickly being good. Definitely a path to exile matchup. They've got a lot of creatures. They're probably just trim Thalia, especially if I'm bringing in path. What do we what do we think of that? Just swap Thalia for Path. Seems reasonable. I think I like that. What do the what do the kids say? YOLO. Greedy, greedy isn't the question you want to ask yourself there, Pike. The question is, is it necessary? And like once you're at that point, why not just play five color humans? be the don't ask yourself if you can ask yourself if you should what problem are you reaching out to solve by making that change i 
I guess I guess the green splash in this deck is relatively free. I guess the green splash in this deck is pretty free because you have uh, Horizon Lands. You get to play Waterlogged, though you have two of the three Bant Horizon Lands. I can see that. That's true. That's also a good observation from Ray Mile. The green splash is relatively free, but splashing for a one drop is not free. The number of green sources you need in your mana base increases increases a good amount when you're trying to cast it on one. Uh, just started, Kyle. Match uh, match one, game two, or up a game. I think I'm going to Meddling Mage Time Raveler this turn. Nine does not cast a turn one. Nine mana sources do not, does not cast a turn one one drop consistently. Yeah, four, 14's the floor. 15's closer to ideal. Fifteen is definitely closer to ideal. You're like, land deputy of detention, my Aether Vials, and I'm going to concede in response. I guess I have a path, technically. I have a path, so like I still get to play magic here. I would be surprised if Mariner is good in spirits, because part of the reason why spirits is a good deck is because it has largely evasive threats. I think once you deviate from the plan of having largely evasive threats and spirits, you should probably just be playing humans. The archetypes do very similar things. If I name Deputy, I can't cast mine, but I guess I can Aether Vial mine in. But it's like six in one hand, half dozen in the other, right? Like if I name Deputy and they have Time Raveler, they can just bounce my Meddling Mage and then like play their Deputy. These things counting for each other for Death Touch is kind of sweet. Yeah, Spirits has other other good tools. We did 5-0 with Jeskai and Aeronix. We, 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 beat, we beat Dredge with Ashiok in the third game. That was pretty dope. Uh, they're playing Bant creatures. Bant is uh, blue-white. Blue-white-green. I would love to use Aether Vial's ability. We get to curve Mariner into Deputies and Reflector Mages. Maybe we can stabilize here. I suppose they're probably going to get a Gavany Township with this Knight of the Reliquary. Which is probably going to be a tough nut to crack. I'm probably going to have to... I'm probably going to have to Deputy these if they get Gavany. Uh, 
Uh, we played Jeskai, Jeskai Tempo is the first deck today. Spellcrawlers and Time Elvers and Stepcaster Mages and such. Yeah, it's like Baleful Strix with some hoops, but it's also in worse colors. I mean, Field of Rune doesn't kill my land. I have two basics in my deck. Put on having some connection issues here. Hey, morning, Brecken. So if I hit, if I hit a land again next turn, I can like have a giver and violin another mariner and then like play one of my threes and maybe be okay here. I mean, it's not really efficient removal socio penguin because it's not really a removal spell on two, right? Like, it's got Death Touch here, but I feel like Death Touch is often going to be more the exception than the rule. Right? What are we, what are we doing, opponent? Come on now. Live, live and in technical error. Yeah, activating, activating these together puts these into play. With their powers combined, we shall protect the world. Is there ever a downside to playing Stolands? Not over basics, no. The problem is in modern, especially in three color decks, you're frequently fetching shock lands. So you can cast your spells consistently. You also often play non-fetch, non-shock lands, such as like Seachrome Coast to enable things as well. This is, this is a great example of why I like Arena having an individual action timer. Because, like, having to sit here and wait 10 minutes for my opponent to take a game action is just so incredibly tedious. Magic Online lets you effectively walk away from your computer for 9 minutes and 59 seconds and not get punished for it. And the, the clocks on Magic Online are so incredibly long that you don't get punished in terms of like not having enough time to play your match either. Especially in modern where the format tends to be really fast and brutal. Black Cleave Cliffs is $30. That one's come down. Oh, MTG Finance. That one that one's on a discount. Get them while they're hot. Uh, I think Arena's timer is pretty close to ideal. I would I would decrease the total the total time you have per match to 20 minutes, but Arena's timer is pretty great. Arena has an individual action timer and a total turn timer. And like now my opponent clicked a button on my turn, which resets their 10 minute wait. So now we're sitting here for anywhere between, you know, zero and ten minutes while we wait for them to take a game action. How's everyone doing this morning? Happy Thursday. 
I was thinking I might be able to get to a fourth modern deck today, but that's looking pretty unlikely at uh, the current rate of play. Here's mommy. You're not my real mom, you're just a stepmom. fact that our vials got reset feels bad. We'd maybe be in this game if I, if I would have gotten down my threes. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna have a lot of threes next turn. Perfect, Danon. Thanks again for shipping me stuff to play standard this weekend. Uh, Mother of Runes isn't modern legal, Thunderwunk. Yeah, I think we're going to have to deputy the Kotals. And then we're probably going to like deputy Kotals, deputy Knight of the Reliquary. Oh, you know what? I can, um, I think I'm going to actually attack. And then just pro green this. Like, get my head in. Maybe I'm supposed to save the pro green for defense on the backswing. I guess the knight's going to be pretty big. Yeah, I probably that was that was silly. I should have I should have I should have left mom on defense this turn. Unless they don't have a Gavany Township. If they don't have a Gavany Township, it's like not a big deal. But like if they have Township here, I'm taking eight in the air. And then I have to chump block the Knight of the Roller Quarry. Hopefully I just get like a Cycle Land here and draw a card. That would be ideal for the home team. Yeah, Township is expected. Under the bus. Yeah, definitely. I definitely should have saved. Give her runes activation here. We'll see a township activation put us to nine here, I assume. Casual, casual eight minute clock differential. Yeah, we've got we've got a lot of disruption in our hand. Getting both these vials to three here is a big deal. I need to start pumping out some stiff. Think I'm just passing for the turn. Yeah, today's a shorter stream that's only modern Ro Ro Roz. Christy, Christy and I are taking, taking the kids on a trip for a longer weekend and playing tournaments on Saturday and Sunday, but the events at a water park hotel, so we're taking the kids up there. Sure. I'm gonna go ahead and Reflector Mage the night here. I like, I like the suggestion to tempo the night with the Reflector Mage a little bit.
This is technically a lethal attack with the Gavity Township activation. Now I have Stepmom to protect Deputy, which is great. Yeah, I waited. They were passing priority to deal damage. That card, this card, Path to Exiles, every creature we control for six mana. It's basically, yeah, it's basically Settle the Wreckage that's not Settle the Wreckage. All right, we have to take this one on the play. It's really good in the creature matchups. Why well, I would never play. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, creature decks. Uh, yeah, I think this is fine. I need some lands, but like, Champion into Thalia's Lieutenant's pretty aggressive, and I got double removal. As far as, like, non-land draws go there, that one's pretty good. Yeah, our Just Guy League went really sweet first thing this morning. They don't have a path here. They're going to be in a lot of trouble. And if they do have a path, they unlock my Bugler. So it's like six in one hand, half dozen in the other. Deal. I'll take a Plains. I think I want a Bugler before I Thalia's Lieutenant. You can sack your land for another look at your third land. Technically correct. Which one could argue is the best kind of correct. I think I want to take Giver here because I probably want to double spell next turn, like go Lieutenant into Giver. Unless they have like Rattle Chains, this attack is pretty free. Because the, the Snake doesn't have Death Touch currently. Snake, a snake. Oh, it's a snake. Move a knight. Now I think Giver is just the better card here. And yeah. Looks like we might have a repeat of the first game where we were just really aggressive and ran them down. This does notably get them closer to their six mana overload, but they're hopefully going to be dead before that's relevant. And um, the knight is technically a ramp spell as well, right? Like it activates after they float mana. So they just have a similar amount. Get you to six. We get to play... Uh, Mariner plus path something this turn, which is nice. I think I'm just going to go ahead and bugler here. Is that fetch land? Does fetching make the path? Fetching makes my path lethal, right? Mm, there's spell caller. Okay.
Well, this has death touch now because they have enough basics. So I've been pathing them. I think I take meddling mage here. You think I want deputy? Meddling, meddling mage is a lethal attacker. And it can turn off their six mana thing. Down the line if they like try and stabilize the board. I mean, I have Giver of Runes to get past a threat, though. I think I just want more two power creatures. And because they have the card that can kill all my stuff, I'm just attacking. Smush. They have to they have to block two things here so they can go trade, trade, take three, go to two. I guess deputy's better if they went thing thing here. That's fair. That's fair. What a uh... What's the name of the the card that overloads? Can anyone give me the name of the overload card offhand? Anyone? Bueller? Winds of Abandon. Is in fact winds of abandon. So, for reference in paper magic, if you don't know the exact name of a card, you can, but you know the rules text of the card or can describe what it does, you can pick the cards you're naming with meddling mage in that manner. So you can say, I'm going to name the two mana card that overloads for six to exile my board. And that, that's considered legitimate under the current rules of magic. Oh, Borborygmos. <laughs> Yeah, if you can describe the text of a card to a judge, you can, the judge will tell you the name of that card. You can say, judge, what's the card called, what's the card called that does this? Sure, Meddling Mage does specifically say name, and that's why I'm taking the time to describe to you how the rules of the game work. How they're not how they're not super rigid to the fact that you have to know the specific name you can describe the card yeah there's a lot of good there's a lot of good pithing needle stories out there selling arena accounts is definitely against the terms of service I kind of didn't catch who Burgle was responding to there, but selling, selling your arena account is definitely against the TOS. Uh, all right, this is the best of the hands I've looked at. Sweet. All right. Game one, Leyline of the Void. What, what is this format? What? What is this format? Modern's incredibly diverse and healthy, Jeff. There's a lot of variety. There's there's not certain decks that are much better than other decks, Jeff. Stoneforge Mystic is too good, Jeff. Game one pregame action. Put my ley line of void into play, Jeff. <laughs> Oh. 
the sad part is our hand's so bad because we mulliganed and got Inquisition. I don't think we're going to be able to, like, take advantage of the fact that they started down a card. Uh, what's the, what's the three drop processor called? Uh, what's that mechanic called? Wasteland Strangler, that's the one. They're, they're probably an Eldrazi deck playing Wasteland Strangler and that's why they can afford to main deck Leyline of the Void. So let's just nip that one in the bud so it doesn't uh, gobble up my humans. Name Stone Forge Mystic. I'm going to be honest, I don't know what Aria of the Flame does. All right, so we just got to draw Mantis Rider next turn, and we'll be good to go. We just got to draw Mantis Rider, and then we'll be good to go. Ha! <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, it could be, could be an Eldrazi deck still. Could just be a black-white mid-range deck that's, like, had it up to here with getting Hogarked and, like, played some main, main deck ley lines. Yeah, like, we mulligan my opponent mulliganed to six starting with this ley line in this matchup, but we affect, we mulliganed to five, so, like, we were still down a card. That's interesting. It's, it's neat that that's a Pyromancer's Ascension type card that doesn't lose to... It's a Pyromancer's Ascension type card that doesn't lose to... Ah, uh, what's it called? The Graveyard Hate. The fact, that, the fact that they want Graveyard Hate against you anyways and that kind of diversifies your threat base is nice. All right, can I draw a creature? If I draw if I draw a castable creature here, we could be in an okay spot. It's like the worst of the castable creatures we could draw, but it's what we've got to work with, so here we are. I'm gonna go ahead and exile Leyline of the Void rather than uh rather than potentially reset their Liliana the Veil. Deputy that busted free spell, right? Freedom! Oh, no! Yeah, main deck. Main deck, Bajookabog. They're probably the Eldrazi processor deck, right? Bad adventure, I guess. Mm, yeah, Love and Art seems sweet with that card. Oh, no! Please don't. Please don't feel to ruin my land that's been hurting me all game. Oh no. Two drop. One drop. Ugh. That's such a tilt. Maybe I should just wait. Maybe I should wait and do this, do that at the end of their turn. It's just so good if I hit a two drop, one or a two drop this turn. And I feel like I'm behind enough that I want to try and take a risk to catch up. That 
That is a main deck ley line. Because modern's a diverse and healthy format. Well, I mean, it was bizarre because my opponent put ley line in their main deck, and I mulliganed to five. So, like, if I'd have been plus two cards this game, like, it probably wouldn't have been particularly close. I'm actually just clicking submit here. I guess deputy detention is kind of mediocre. Oriak, Oriak, and Selfless Spirit both seem fine. Yeah, Champion has protection from black, which will let it dodge a lot of their removal. Bring in Rip in solidarity, Sarah, solidarity with opponent's feelings about Graveyard, right? Yeah, gaining access to non-human and non-creature spells that we can cast by guy. So like humans, for instance, can't really afford to play a lot of deputies because they can't always cast it consistently. We get to play cards like Path to Exile and Rest in Peace as well. We get to cast Giver of Runes consistently. Uh, deputy is a Vidalcan wizard. You're a wizard, Harry. Is there a chance they're a pox deck? I mean, it's modern. There's a chance they're anything. To set a bar that's low, I think Devoted Druid combo is much better than Amulet. In fact, speaking of Amulet and power level, Edgar didn't play Amulet the Invitational, right? He finally put that deck down. Which feels, feels like it gives me long-standing validation for my pivot on feelings about that archetype in recent months. Yeah, Giver, Giver of Runes and Deputy are explicitly not humans and that, that's a conscious choice on R&D's part, which is good. I think, I think they were painfully aware of this deck when they, when they elected to make that card not, not be a... Amulet's amulet not only lacks amulet doesn't lack consistently consistency it lacks consistent speed is the issue like amulet does what it does but it's just not always linear and its interaction isn't powerful enough to keep it alive in the games where its linear draws don't come together and the the types of matchups that the amulet deck it preys on essentially just don't have like slowly disappeared in modern. Really want to draw a land here so we can bugler into a two drop. Morning, Zace. Um, I think I just tell you here. I think I just tell you, right? It's like slow him down. Actually, I'm going to Mariner because Mariner means that if they have Wasteland Strangler, they have to pay, they can't Wasteland Strangler my thing next turn, which is great. Gives me a chance to reflect your mage and pick my Militia Bugler back up. Oh no! 
Oh, yes. Yay, Mariner. Yay, Mariner. Woo, Mariner. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. Trigger. Nice Magic the Gathering card you have, opponent. Nice Magic the Gathering card you have. Would be... Would be terrible shame if something were to happen to it. What is this archaic software? Welcome to the 90s, my children. <sighs> of course you're playing Damnation in your creature deck. Of course you're playing Damnation in your creature deck. Why? Why wouldn't there be Damnation in your creature deck? Okay, just name like Liliana the Veil here. Yeah, I took, I took the Selfless Spirit to hedge that the following turn, but obviously I couldn't play it out soon enough. Yeah, yeah, Thalia, Thalia would have put them off of that one for an extra turn. Send it back from whence it came. Bobby! It's always no, always yield to this one. Survey says, when it rains, it pours, chat. When it, when it rains, it pours. And unfortunately, we're already through two of our three Militia Buglers this game, which is the reason why we're still playing post-Damnation. But the fact that we lost those is a pretty big deal. It means we don't really have any card advantage left in our deck. Would you like to trade for the Meddling Kids? You would. Liliana the Veiled and be sad now. This is my land. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Second, second Bob makes the trade last turn make a lot of sense. I think I'm supposed to offer the trade of Reflector Mage for Bob this turn. While the, while the Bob could maybe get lucky for us, I think it's more likely to just draw them. Draw them into removal spells for our board. Oh. What Magic the Gathering card do you feel represents you or a family member? I have no idea. I have a Fatal Push. 
right, well, I guess they're taking two here, and then they're getting to untap with Bobby. That's Bobby. Show me potato salad. That's a four drop that gains them life back. It's like a mixed bag. It's mixed mixed metaphors, Bob. This this hurts you a good deal, but then it also gains you life back. So I'm not quite certain how I feel about it. I think we're dead, chat. I think we have died. On, on to the next one. Du, 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 du. How are we doing, folks? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good night to everybody wherever you're at in the world. Thanks for dropping in here today. My name is Jeff Hoagland. I stream full-time here on Twitch. We play Magic 30, 40, sometimes even 50 hours a week. If you're someone who enjoys constructed magic, modern, standard, all sorts of jazz like that, this is definitely the channel for you. We play a ton of different decks here and usually change decks every uh, 60 minutes to two hours or somewhere in the middle, so you get a lot of variety every day. As always, love to give a shout out to my wonderful subs. I wouldn't be here doing that without their support. So thanks to all of them for keeping me employed. I'd also like to plug a couple of my sponsors here really quick. The Nerd Rage Gaming Championship Series, a $5,000 cash tournament series that happens every single month in the Midwest United States. I'm actually going to be playing in their standard tournament this weekend. So if you want to possibly see me play some paper magic, be sure to check out twitch.tv forward slash NRG series this weekend. BCW Supplies, the only ones I trust to protect my paper, Magic the Gathering cards, using code JEFF10. You can save 10% on sleeves, binders, deck box, and all sorts of other fantastic gaming accessories there with them. Cardsphere.com would love to help you turn your Magic cards into other cards, such as other players with their peer-to-peer -peer trading service. And they also have a wonderful draft simulator on their website that's completely free to use. I'd also like to welcome everyone out there to Hooklandia. I know there's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff, and I appreciate you spending part of your Thursday here. And if you're new and enjoying the content, make sure to hit that follow button. It doesn't cost you anything. It lets you know uh, when I go live and with what. Especially if you like modern, we usually do modern uh, every morning to start things off. Between now and the end of the month, I'm going to be doing, uh, I think, two modern decks per day. So long as we have enough submissions to do that. Makes sense to lean into a little bit more of the non-rotating format while we wait for the next standard set to drop. I am uh, here here and ready to uh, get a little bit of a change into standard. Yeah, you're welcome to still do the sub-survey. Although it's been filled out by enough people at this point that like a single... A single edition is unlikely to push the needle too, too much. See, I'm, I'm actually a little bit at the opposite end of the spectrum, Penop. The longer the standard format's gone on, the more it's been kind of grinding for me. Like, there's a lot of different decks, but I'm not sure I really love the play patterns of a lot of them like prison style effects like three mana tefri and narset tend to generate gameplay patterns that i think are pretty unenjoyable in a lot of situations things things like three mana tefri and like mono red being so good in the format also tend to generate a lot of really polarizing games where the person who's on the play is incredibly favored rhino thank you for the five months i appreciate that welcome 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 back thanks for keeping me around Ooh, we're gonna need to deputy the crap out of that one. Yeah, there's also that, Pikes. Mid-range, mid-range brews are unplayable in the format because of how good the Thief and Command the Dread Horde decks are. And mid-range, mid-range brews are some of my personal favorite to work on. You just get pushed out. Hey, David, thanks for the two on three sub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Yeah, and like by all means, don't. Don't let me harsh your jam. If you're loving standard, go ahead and love it. 
Like Magic's Magic's all about having a format that you like, having decks that you enjoy in it. I don't I don't mind the Naya Feather deck. All right. Would it have been better to make a 1-1 one, one, and 3-3 three, because three, EE is, is on 2. I'd encourage you to read Engineered Explosives. I do not think it does what you say it does. Uh, if I vial this in there, they're going to blow up Engineered Explosives. This could eat a counter spell here. So, like, maybe I should wait to vial it in off of this next turn. I kind of want to use my mana, though. Oh, that makes sense. If I put Champion into play before Thalia's Lieutenant... I get a 1-1 one, one, and a 3-3 three, three, as opposed to two 2-2s two, because one of the 2-2s two, is dying. That makes sense. That's why That's why the devil is in the details. Um, do I want a meddling mage, a sweeper? I don't really know what they're doing. Do I just assume they're an ensnaring bridge deck? They're pretty far off of bridge locking me out of the game, though. I feel like I want a meddling mage here, but I don't know what to name. I could also just like wait and lieutenant. I think I'm just gonna wait and lieutenant. Uh, yeah, I think I am naming War of Invention here. I'm going to take this to three just in case I find that. All right. Um, all right, so what does my sequencing look like now? I probably still want to name War, huh? I probably still want to name War. I think I just do this next turn. Well, my Aether Vial is currently off. My Aether, my Aether Vial is currently off. So they could sack two artifacts to kill this. I think I'm okay with that exchange.
I don't think it really matters, Tom. I'm not even sure that I want to... I'm not even sure that I want to deputy the Pithy Needle. Like, in the event that they draw in Staring Bridge here, I'd like to be able to deputy the Staring Bridge, I think. We should have done this pre-combat. Doing this pre-combat means they have to make two Thopters. Uh, no, it doesn't actually. No, it doesn't because they gain a life. I wonder if we'll see him sack Citadel here. How many card designs in the last year or two do you think started as a human and had to be changed like Deputy or Stepmom? Probably a lot. I don't think I'm playing around a sweeper here. I think I want to just do this to go wide around however many Thopters they can make next turn in case they draw a sword. And I'm going to hold on to the Deputy in the event that they like, have Bridge. Yeah, Deputy, Deputy not being a human is one of the advantages of playing this over the five color humans decks. We can cast it more consistently. Yeah, there is an incredibly disappointing league with blue-black fairies with new cards in it. So, I elected when I built this deck to not put Stony Silence in my sideboard. Because again, when you're playing these fair kind of interactive decks in Modern, you're basically... Shaking up some dice and rolling them, trying to gamble which matchups you're going to play. So you'll notice this deck has Rest in Peace and Graph Digger's Cage in the board. I guess Rest in Peace uh, technically breaks up their, their Thopter Sword combo, huh? So I'll bring that in. But I don't, I don't unfortunately, have any copies of Stony Silence. Thalia makes the Thopters come into play tapped, which is nice. Uh, is it crazy to trim a Giver of Runes here? I think that's probably the trim. You can always find all of the decks that I played on my website and my YouTube channel. You can click Videos Modern. There's also a playlist on the front page of my YouTube page. Doesn't she only stop non-creature spells? I think she only stops non-creature spells. Yeah. She doesn't do anything. That card's just bad. Just, just bad.
Oh, it does have a second part. That's such weird templating. That's such strange templating. It's weird that they would template the first part to only affect non-creature spells, and then the second part is all spells. So she does. I don't I still don't think that card is good, but she does stop Hogark, I guess technically speaking. I guess, I guess I'm going to play these out. They want to trade two artifacts for either of my creatures. I'm fine with that. I think playing these is better than, is better than rest in piecing this turn. Oh, uh, that is a, that is a snow. That is a snow artifact. So I'm giving them the option to sack both of these and trade for my Choo Choo here if they want. It turns off their Mox Opal though, so I think that's a fine. No, they're just playing this because it's a one mana artifact that replaces itself. Go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep, little artifacts. Do, 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 do. So you have to make two dorks, gain two life. Rip comes down, stops them from doing any more in the future. I mean, this could be more rude, Zach. This could have been a stony silence if I really hated artifacts. Or like, all things all things considered, this is them getting splash hate from other cards. I don't I don't have explicit hate for artifacts. I've got I've got rest in peace for this nasty graveyard decks. How aggressive do I want to be with this deputy is a real question. Hopefully I hit like a Thalia's lieutenant here. I guess I could bugler into lieutenant. Let's try and bugler into a lieutenant. Mariner's not bad. It pumps up that champion of the parish again. So that lets me attack in with that this turn. We like to find a two drop human here. Like that one. 
Getting to hold the deputy of detention here. Getting to hold the deputy of detention for a... Uh, for an ensnaring bridge is really sweet. Yeah, I just have four canopy lands. I've got two... Uh, I've got two, uh, three white and one blue. Hey Hans, thanks for the five months. I appreciate that. Now they could, they could work for a bridge here. Am I okay trading this for this Thopter? Yeah, I think so. This text isn't very good. It's just like it's basically just like a Watch Wolf at this point. Would not be surprised seeing the double block here. Yeah. Put the one with the sword first, so they have to equip the other one if they want. Down to 10. Go ahead. Is there a reason for the white split that I'm not seeing? Pithing needle, sorcerer spyglass. All right, uh, losing, that's actually really relevant. Losing losing my Mariner there actually allowed them to Echoing Truth this. And they wouldn't have been able to Echoing Truth it if I'd have kept the Mariner. It's a good one to think about. I keep forgetting that it protects all of my permanents, which is really sweet. Um, if I rest in peace and then they make things in response and then I deputy clear the Thopters, they're dead, right? Uh, Croc Clan Ironworks went infinite with, uh, with Thopter Sword. So that's no longer legal. So I'm going to leave one of these on two and put the other one to three. Urza now goes infinite. Okay, sweet. Of course it does. So the rest in peace on the stack means they have to sack this a couple of times in response, and then I get two. Is this deputy revealed? It's not. So if they make if they make two Thopters, my deputy comes into play and gets the Thopters. And deputy's just a really good magic card. It's like people are again asking, like, what's the reason to not be in five colors? And like having mana to play four deputies consistently feels really good. Like, normal humans play some deputies, but they don't jam forks. There's a lot of situations you get into where you just can't cast it because of your five color mana. And they can't work because work takes blue mana. Beep, beep. Driving in my humans. Beep, beep. Hope no one wrecks into me. Get him. Get him. All right. Two and one. After losing to a uh, black, white, black, white main deck Layla out of the void. Get them, got them good. And one of the things, one of the things that like really jumps out at me in this list too, talking about like the potential benefits that this might have over five color humans is that we've gotten with the addition of Modern Horizon these last few sets, there's so many good just blue and white creatures that it's like, 
I didn't really struggle to fill out any of the slots in my main deck here. Like, I felt like looking at just the blue and white creatures, and I was like, oh, I have more than enough cards here. Like, I don't even have four Militia Bugler because there's so many good cards to pick from. So I really feel like that's a consideration too, right? Like, as we print more and more cards, like, I'm not playing really any bad cards for the sake of playing just two colors. Turn one, fetch Hollowed Fountain, and then they'll be confused when we play. When we start playing humans out. Yeah, I elected not to play Phantasmal Image because Mariner and Stepmom don't really work well with Phantasmal Image. I don't know. I don't really play Magic casually as in tough. Jeskai Human, sure. It's probably pretty similar to like what we're doing here, I'd imagine. Arbor Elf, pick your poison. Do you want to lose to Blood Moon or do you want to lose to Stone Rain? We're going to pick lose to Stone Rain. Although I guess Mariner here means they can't Stone Rain me next turn, which is sweet. Well, like, they can, but they're not going to like the result. This deck could probably play Mantis Rider because we could change, we could play more red pain lands. So there's blue, red, and red, white, red, white canopy lands. And I have some ancient ziggurats and some, some cavern of souls. Please stone rain me. Please stone rain me. Please stone rain me. Please don't know what my deck does in stone rain me. Uh, there's like eight red sources in this mana base at least, right? Oh no, not Blood Moon. How will we ever win the game now, opponent? Oh no. I think I'm actually going to go ahead and take their Arbor Elf here. So I want to slow them down. I have no idea, Chalky. And again, just like talking about like... Like the, the question many Magic players, is people in general, don't ask yourself if we can. Stop it. Ask yourself if we should. What is the value? What is the value from doing what you're suggesting? Why is it a worthwhile suggestion? Stop saying we can do this and start saying should we do this? Uh, Horizon Canopy is basically a red source because it could easily be it could easily be another Sunbaked Canyon. More in Space Ace. String of Lieutenants here could maybe get us into this. Depending on how aggressive everything else is in their hand. Wow. Yeah, no blocks. They have a bolt here. If they don't have a bolt, this attack seems real loose. Like, next, next left tenant is like... 
This is a 5-5 five, five, and this is a 3-3. Three, three. This is a 5-5. Five, five. This is out of anger range at least. They go land. If they go land, crack, clue, anger, or sweltering suns, we're going to be a little bit behind. They don't. If they don't sweep the board here, we should be in a good spot to win. I guess they could have glory banger this turn and like pop that out. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Do, 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 do. Spin to win. It's a lot of blockers. This, this means their tireless tracker doesn't have five power though, which is great for us. What happens if I attack with everything? They could eat this and double block here and then they die. They could double block here, chump block here. So this is this is a free attack, basically, right? I guess I guess it's not a free attack. They could go, they could go trade, eat, they could go trade, eat, chump, and then go to one. And I lose this and this. And then I have two five fives. I think that's fine, right? I guess they get their Arbor Elf back from throwing the Deputy in. Am I just supposed to attack with the five fives? Maybe I'm only supposed to attack with the five fives. Did they concede or did my client crash? They conceded. Got it. I think Selfless and Oriac both seem fine here. Thalia's probably not good enough. Meddling Mage is probably a little bit mediocre. I don't know exactly which sweepers and stuff they're on. I don't think I want Path to Exile. They have some bigger creatures, but I think like deputies and reflector mages just to like tempo them are fine. My favorite thing is when you can't tell whether you've won or if it's crashed, right? You're just like, what's going on, Moto? Find out, find out next time on Magic the Gathering. Yeah, there's a lot of people who do nothing but play Ponza, so the archetypes frequently in the 5 0 list. So this hand's obviously not good against Blood Moon, but it is what it is. This is this is modern. This hand's keepable. If they don't have Blood Moon, sometimes you just gotta take a chance. Hope that you get to play Magic. Modern. Modern's a format where you frequently just don't get to play. You just gotta kind of take your lumps and accept it. And it has three lands in it, which makes it okay against getting stone rained on too.
Maybe, maybe the rest of their hand doesn't do anything. If they, if they play Tireless Tracker next turn, I'm going to concede. Because we're not, we're not beating Torpor Orb along with any amount of other stuff. Again, Modern is a format where you effectively just don't get to play a large portion of the time. Your opponent, your opponent wants to beat you. There's probably multiple cards in the format that just completely hose your deck. So if they play any sort of real threat here, I'm gonna pack it in. Because our, our motley crews of two threes, two twos, and one twos are not gonna not gonna do much here. Sure, their hand their hand might might be nothing. Yeah, Meddling Mage still works. Meddling Mage is a replacement effect as it enters the battlefield, as Dan Ward now knows. JK, Dan Ward always knew that. Can can I beat a 3-3? Three, three? I think I named Tireless Tracker. They like they like are almost certainly playing four trackers, and any other payoff they might have is like it could could not be a four of. So like if they don't do anything past this, we could be okay. No, Dan Ward got banned for trying to respond to a meddling mage entering the battlefield. That's why, that's why Dan Ward got banned. If they have a removal spell, they just kill Giver of Runes with it anyways, so I might as, might as well use Giver to prevent my block here. It is old news. Isn't he legal again? I think I think it's old enough that he might actually be able to play again, if I recall correctly. Alright, never beating a kitchen things while there's a torpor about. And I I know they don't gain life from it, but I'm just not beating a 3-2 into a 2-1. That then that then turns their scoots into a 4-4. Four four. Even with the Sunbig Canyon, I just can't keep this as good as Aether Vial is against the Blood Moon deck. So, for the record, they didn't just read people that are new that think that sounds harsh. They didn't ban Dan Ward for taking an illegal game action. They banned Dan Ward... For six months, I believe it was, because after interviewing him and his opponent, they felt like he tried to cheat. They felt like he knew he was breaking the rules of the game and tried to do so for an intentional advantage. In Magic, you cannot accidentally cheat. Cheating in competitive Magic requires two things. It requires that you break the rules of the game and that you knowingly do so to gain an advantage in your match. You cannot, you cannot accidentally cheat in competitive magic. It's just not how it works. And obviously there's some subjectiveness there. 
but a player a player with his experience and after the judges talked to him and his opponent they felt like he knew what he was doing and tried was trying to get away with something all right hopefully they play tireless tracker next turn actually hopefully they play blood moon so i can right click concede and go to the next match i'm actually not a huge fan of lattice inside of green tron It takes up too many sideboard slots for all the different Karn tricks, and then I'm not sure it's really better than playing your other bombs. Triggers, triggers are different than game rules. So it's not, if you actually understand the rules of the game, it's not that different. It's not weird. Because there's, there's a difference between letting your opponent, between a triggered ability and a game rule. They're functionally different. Need to auto yes to this thing next time it comes up. Now, I really, I really don't think it's very good, Fear Burger. In, in my opinion, not only are the sideboard slots valuable that you're losing, but it's just not meaningfully better than most of the other threats you could be playing a lot of the time. Tracker me, daddy. Yeah. Reflected. Missile land drop. Missile land drop. Missile land drop. Missile land drop. Rats, we're so unlucky. That's true. New card in Bluetron seems good, because Bluetron's so full of bad cards, it's not hard to get upgrades. Please just crack the clue. Spyglass. That one doesn't matter. To avoid cheating. I think uh, the long-term goal is probably for Wizards of the Coast to move all of their major tournaments to Arena at some point. That's not modern. I think you'll always have independent circuits like Nerd Rage Gaming and Star City Games, playing in paper because those circuits are trying to sell magic the gathering cards they aren't trying to uh they aren't trying to promote just magic in general I don't think I'm going to be in a position to beat a sweeper this game, like an Anger of the Gods or a Sweltering Sun, so I think I'm just going to be aggressive and, like, have Stepmom get in here. Like, get in my extra point. Anger me. Anger me, puppy. It's gonna be like Inferno Titan kill you. Ugh. It doesn't feel that much different than playing Stock Humans the last time we played it. Stock Humans is always an archetype that's like, I know it's good, but it's just like playing playing humans in modern feels Feels a lot like playing Death and Taxes and Legacy. 
it's like I take a, I take a step back from the format and I look at all the interesting things I can be doing and it's like really mother of runes and aether vial these are these are the things you've decided are worth your time to do and you find interesting it's like they're so they're just kind of dry from my gameplay perspective griffin bruce thank you for the 34 months i appreciate that welcome 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 back thanks for keeping me around It's okay, a little bit mana heavy, but Sunbake Canyon sort of turns into something else down the line, so that's nice. <laughs> I, I would confirm that the spark double combo works the way you think it works on Magic Arena. I also don't think it's very competitive. I would be surprised, so I'm not sure it's something I really want to play. Yeah, the arena update today is to add in, um, what's it called? They're adding in the pre-order for M20 cards. Hopefully we draw two mana human next turn, so we get to go champion two mana human. If I fail to draw one or two mana human, I'll probably just deputy. Burn kept a one lander and died. Yay, magic. Woo, magic. All right, so... Oriac Champion sounds great. Selfless Spirit sounds fine. Uh, Mariner sounds great. Meddling Maid seems a little bit mediocre. <coughs> Actually, Heretic Cathar is probably not stellar. Deputy Detention's not amazing, but a lot of burn decks have, um, a lot of burn decks have, uh, ensnaring bridge in the sideboard, so I don't want to be cold to that post board. In fact, I'm going to cut all these mages and bring in two paths here. Does it really take a client update to add items to the store? Yeah, because they have to add, like, graphics for it, too. I'd imagine, Zeke, like, they don't, they don't have the graphical elements in the application for the thing that they're adding to the store. Eidolon is nuts against us. I uh, not really. Like we have we have Aether Vial and we can just like put big things into play and attack with them and then just like stop casting spells. In fact, especially on the draw, I think this is a matchup where my opponent probably doesn't want Eidolon in their deck at all. Hey, does Unsettled Mariner Whenever you are pretty controlled. Unsettled Mariner makes Searing Blades cost four, huh? That's pretty sweet. That's like that's like a big that's like a big up, huh? Like make your make your best card against us cost twice as much. That seems like not unreasonable. Double Talia. I think I keep this. Talia is one of our better cards in this matchup. It kind of sucks to not have one of our many one mana plays, but I think this is definitely like in the realm of keepable. <clears throat> Hopefully, we just like draw Aether Vial or like give River Runes on one. Or Path to Exile, just any of the above. Reflector Mage, yep. So again, not exactly what we're looking for, but not a bad draw either. Hey, thanks for trying out my variant of Demir Control Jitter. Mana base is a little bit greedy. The thing with Ops and Short, of course, it's fine. Thanks for the support raid. Now, and I'll take a, I always take a peek at the mana before we play it, usually. Thanks for keeping me around. How much would I have to donate for you to play standard at MTGO for a day? No arena. A thousand dollars. Thanks for the five months, Moldy. I 
like this hits her. Yep. Listen, I'm not gonna. I don't tell people no. Like everything's got a price, but like my prices, prices for things I don't want to do are high. Right on, right on time, Aether Vile. Welcome to the party. Enjoy your stay. How much can she play Modern in Arena instead of Odo? Gosh, I would love to play Modern on Arena. It's a shame that's never going to happen. How much should I put a bag in your trash can? There's not any garbage in it. I'm lazy and haven't replaced a bag, but I'm not just like throwing slops into a plastic bin. Right. Well, we're taking four more here, down to seven. They have two cards left. I do get to go Thalia plus... I think I want to go... Do I... Or do I want to just Reflector Mage? Yeah, they don't have a Searing Blaze. I'm actually going to go Vile plus Reflector Mage this turn, I think. It's like send the Swiftsphere back from where it came. They don't want to spend it. Like, anything other than Searing, Bla Searing Blaze killing this is fine. So it's like a bird spell not going to my face, which is nice. Alright, so we're dead. Burn deck's really good when it only draws three lands. Alright, that's fine. You stick the next game on the plate. Moto gives me goosebumps, no problem. I'll catch you, catch you on Monday. I'm off tomorrow. I'll be back on Monday with our our normal schedule. Although I think I'm gonna do two modern to start the day. Yeah, two modern again every day next week. Yes. Deputies like a borderline playable card when I've got Giver and Unsettled in this matchup, huh? Yeah, the, sand, the sand's got curves, that's for sure. Well, I mean, technically, spoilers started this week, right? Actually... Maybe I'm just supposed to Mariner here to make their spells cost more. That's rude. That's rude. So I have Selfless Spirit to protect Stepmom. And I have Unsettled Mariner to protect everything else. Seems like a good, seems like a good setup. Morning, Carl. This card was a standard staple back in its day. There was a, there was a, a burn deck in the standard format that played this card. So, like, Mariner triggers on abilities, too. So, like, this card's really awkward against Mariner, right? Because, like, they have to pay an extra to hit my face, and then they have to pay extra to hit Mariner. Or to, like, hit my creature. It's really annoying that the bot doesn't have the Horizon cards in there yet. They've been released for a week now or whatever. Yeah, it's a week today, right?
But I'm just like in the tank about what to do with this unsettled mariner. Is it crazy to double block here? I'm going to single block because I have the giver. Because giver can't protect itself anyways. So I think this is fine. Wow. Just no, just, just a straight up bluff. Got it. Opponent conceded. Well, Mariner confirmed confirmed good against confirmed good against uh Burn. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. It's felt it's felt interesting. Um Giver, Giver and Deputy are both, like, very reasonable cards. This card was good at multiple points. The fact that it protects all of your stuff is really nice. Like, it protected Aether Vial at various points. It protected uh, Rest in Peace in one of our combo matchups, which was nice. Uh, someone had mentioned there was a Jeskai Humans deck that did well in, or in the most recent decked up, but I could see that being fine, too. Like, we could, we could splash um, Mantis Rider into this pretty easily, like this Horizon Canopy. Becomes a Sunbaked Canyon. You could play more Caverns too if you wanted, I suppose. Or like, play a Steam Vents in the mana base. Pretty, pretty easily. So if you're looking for a slightly different take on humans that leverages some of the new cards, this might be something to give a try to. I don't know if I've done anything for 17 mods. Thank you very much for the Tier 1 sub, John. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. All right, I'm not 100% sure I can do two more decks, but I feel like I should get cards for two more decks just in case. Is there anything else in my list, in my queue that's fast? Because Ameria is a long, grindy deck, so I definitely don't have time for that. Oh. <sighs> Yeah, let's just do one more to wrap things up. This is this is a t if this is a total dumpster fire, I can figure out one more after this one. We'll see if this thing, if this goes at least ninety minutes, we'll be done. Should we be playing the Hexproof guy? You mean the Shroud guy? Are you talking about this guy, the Goose, Burgle? The Goose, the Goose, the Goose is loose here, Burgle. Don't you, don't you worry, the Goose is here. I'm gonna set his, set his people free. Free the Goose. Free the Goose. Just gonna place an order really quick here with MTGO Trader to get things swapped around. Thanks for hanging out. I want this deck to be good, so it's gonna be a dumpster fire. I think there's a lot of people that want this deck to be good, and I agree it's probably gonna be a dumpster fire. Goose of Saint Draft.
All I want to do is play Delver and Standard. Have you heard of our Lord and Savior Death Shadow? Last time Delver was good in Standard, we lost Bay. Like, yeah, yeah, when Delver, it's funny that Standard Delver just, like, was more powerful than, like, these modern decks are, because, like, Standard Delver got to play Ponder and, and just, like, busted Mental Misstep, got to play Mental Misstep and Ponder. No, I'm pretty sure it was Ponder. I'm like 99. In fact, I'm going to time you out when, you were, when you're wrong here. It was Ponder. Yeah. Get out of here. I played. That was, that was the standard format I cut my competitive teeth on. Played a lot of standard. Oh yeah, they got to play Gataxian Probe too. <laughs> that format was such a bad joke. Yeah, Tempered Steel was legal. Yeah, so there was um, there was a small window over the summer where like two core sets were legal, kind of. Where like you could have Ponder and Preordain and then Preordain rotated out and Ponder was still legal. There was, there was a small window where both of them was le were legal, but then Ponder was legal longer. It was. We got to we got to Snapcaster ponder in in standard. It was great. Cast Liliana the Veil. That that standard.